this juniper larch tamarack some people call it as you can see a lot of them are getting infested with the carpenter ants and you'll notice the woodpeckers have been feeding on them so when you notice the holes the base of the tree chances are it's hollowed out like that in the center and you got to be careful when you're when you're felling them especially these big trees so picked a good day there's no wind notched it and used the pole here about 10 feet long for extra leverage to ensure that it fell the right way. Hi everyone, Dave here. Just in uh, getting the last couple of sled loads for next year's winter's wood for the cabin. And these are all windfalls. As you can see, there are plenty of them here. I've been taking out quite a few. And uh, we're also taking the dead standing. So as you can see, that one up there, that's a dead standing. We'll take that one. And we've got this one. That one's dry. We've taken a lot of the dry juniper out of here, so. What you do is you make a path in the day before on snowshoe and then uh, overnight it was minus 24 last night the path hardens and it's easy to get them back to the sled as you can see well beaten path. There's a dry juniper taken there and here. Notched them and I fell them out towards the sled. And to show you from the previous clip, that's where we started. And we've got most of the windfalls. And the dead standing. Just got a few more over here. We've already got one sled load. And one more to go. And that'll be it. For harvesting firewood. I'll have everything for the remainder of this year and next year. Altogether about, uh, about seven cord. Dry juniper is a lot... <laughs> A lot hotter as it's a denser wood. Uh, the next best thing would be dry spruce here where I reside. So there's not much snow as you can as you can see.
Hi right, everyone, Dave here. Just, uh, just a quick tip for anybody that's got a snowmobile and they're towing a sled or this, like this uh, style here, as well as the well-known Pelican. Just wanted to share with you. Um, if you haven't got a, uh, a beaten path, if you're planning on towing and hauling in a, in a basically powdered uh, condition, one quick tip if you um, are going to get stuck, chances are the back of the machine is going to spin down into the snow, creating an angle where the sled is going to be tilted up this way. Therefore, the pin that you're using to secure with your locking mechanism, a uh, cotter pin or whatever you're using, it may not be accessible. And therefore, you won't be able to get your hitch off to get the machine out and get unstuck. So, quick tip, anybody that's traveling, um, put the pin in, the bolt in upside down, push it up through, have your unlocking mechanism up on the top like it is here. And that way, if you do happen to get stuck, it's just quick and easy. You can unlock your safety pin here. The bolt will slide right out through the snow. Trust me, uh, I know from personal experience, if you've got it going down through the bolt that you see there, if it goes down through on the hitch and you happen to get stuck and the back machine spins down, uh, you'll never get the uh, the pin out to unhook the sled to get your machine out. Chances are if you're hauling a sled uh, with a heavy load like I do with this one, you'll never be able to get the machine out with it connected to the, to the sled. So just a quick tip there. I thought I'd share this with you. As always, take care and thanks for watching. It's the last load. I'll have enough now for next year. There's definitely uh, half a cord there. And you can see it's all it's all dry and cured. It was dead standing and windfall, so I've got uh, mainly spruce. And we've also got juniper. That's it. I'm glad uh, to have all this firewood now uh, for next year.